This is SpaceX financial projection from the Wall Street Journals after reviewing a leaked internal document in 2017, giving us a rare opportunity to peek into the $74 billion space empire. This answers some of the most critical questions we have for the company. Is it profitable? How does SpaceX plan to fund its Mars ambitions? And is SpaceX too optimistic about Starlink's profitability? Three, two, one. Lift off of the Falcon 9. Hey, before we start, if you like analysis in this video and are looking to understand more, I share them in my newsletter, Disrupted, covering businesses and trends that matter. I want to reach out to the critical and smart people on this channel who have an insatiable curiosity for tech disruptions, just like me. It's launched only a week ago, and in fact, analysis in this video is live on the newsletter already. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Subscribe to it down below for free and get smarter with me today. As a private company, SpaceX finances are in a shadow, a shred of secrecy covered with a lot of doubt over its long-term profitability. Starlink expectedly is a game changer for SpaceX financial outlook. Now with over a thousand satellites in space, hundreds more to come in just 2021, SpaceX is closer than ever to realize its projection of 30 billion in revenue per year. But 30 billion is a lot of money. Is that achievable? I'm Lei. Let's explore the economics of Starlink together. Unlike Tesla, Elon Musk's projection on SpaceX are exceedingly accurate. Still optimistic, but the rate of disruption does match its ambitions. Starship's rapid development is the best example. Over the last year, Starship's test vehicle has demonstrated incredible robustness, starting with short distance hop tests, then longer distance tests to its recent soft landing on launch pad. From SN3 to SN15, unbelievable progress was achieved in less than a year. To the public, Starlink was the appetizer of SpaceX story, but the Wall Street Journal presented a different perspective from the inside. It turns out Starlink is the main course. Starlink, of course, is SpaceX consumer internet solution. It consists of three components, satellites, gateways, and a home dish. Everyone knows this. With these devices, users are able to receive internet signals all the way from space. Wall Street Journal's documents revealed SpaceX revenue projection over the 10 year period from 2015 to 2025. The orange bar represents SpaceX launch industry revenue, leveling at around $5 billion per year, a moderate projection considering SpaceX market dominance today. The more consequential segment of SpaceX business, however, is Starlink shown by the pink bar. SpaceX expects Starlink's revenue and profit to rapidly rise in the next few years to $40 and $20 billion respectively. And Starlink, of course, is the key. This is a huge deal and a bold outlook, and it shows SpaceX's level of understanding of its own business, of course. Number one, the launch business has moderate to low profit margins and demand. SpaceX does not project a rapid increase in revenue in its market. And number two, over the years, the majority of SpaceX profits will come from Starlink's operation in the telco communications market. On the outside, Elon Musk and SpaceX send an enthusiastic message about Mars colonization and moon trips, but internally, SpaceX is sober and realistic about its financial situations. It knows the mountain it has to climb. Starship is important, but not nearly as important as Starlink for its eventual profitability. When I look at SpaceX business, I think of it in two different sections, the launch industry and the telco communications industry, in case it is not clear to you, here's the revenue potential in comparison. The space launchers business is a $5 billion market, and the fixed telco data industry is worth over $800 billion, dwarfing the launch industry's potential. Just 1% of the latter industry means 1.6 times the revenue for SpaceX current launch business. When we start to see things from this perspective, Considering SpaceX capability, Starlink is really a no brainer. But how much can SpaceX make with Starlink? It turns out the number kept changing over the years. Starlink's story started in 2015 when Google and Fidelity invested $1 billion into SpaceX. This is why timing is so important here. 
Google put a billion dollars in SpaceX in 2015 when SpaceX had not even landed a booster yet. This is the first indication of SpaceX commitment for Starlink. The money is critical for Starlink's R&D. In 2017, when the leaked documents was made public, SpaceX projected a revenue of over 35 billion, consisting of 5 billion from its launch services and 30 billion from its data services. And finally, in 2019, Elon Musk confirmed the company's target of taking 3 to 5% of the telco communications business, which is worth close to a trillion dollars. This puts Starlink revenue potential to around 30 to 50 billion dollars. Hey, wait a second. We're seeing the, the number getting bigger and bigger over the years. We know how enthusiastic Elon Musk could be when it comes to his products. I am too, but how much is achievable and realistic? Starlink's numbers are completely transparent, so we can't afford to be accurate. SpaceX charges $99 per month for its Starlink services, which means $1,200 per year. In order to have a recurring revenue of $30 billion per year, how many subscribers must SpaceX have? Brace yourself, 25 million subscribers. But hold on a second, we're not talking about 25 million individuals here. Wi-Fi's are shared usually by the whole family. We're talking about 25 million households. For your information, there are around 120 million households in the United States. 25 million would mean 20% of all Americans using Starlink. This is quite an impossible fit to achieve in 2025. If we limit the target audience to rural, computer-only users with bad internet access, which is Starlink's current target audience, this number is only at around 7 million. Basically, 30 billion is impossible to achieve solely from the United States or even the North American market. So to assess viability of 30 billion revenue in the long term, we must look beyond borders of the United States or even North America. We must look at the total addressable market across the globe. According to Quilty Analytics analysis last year, the total available market for Starlink's business, taking into consideration affordability and the rural target segment, there are an estimated 279 million rural computer-owning households worldwide, excluding China. Out of that population, around 70 million households can afford Starlink's price point. This means, according to Quality Analytics, a 50 billion revenue ceiling assuming SpaceX could solve the bandwidth problem and service as many customers as possible. The bandwidth problem. It turns out to ensure good service for all Starlink users, SpaceX has a bandwidth problem to solve. I haven't talked about it yet. Let's do it now. With every services come expectations. According to SpaceX FCC petition in February, with Starlink, it promises a baseline performance of 100 megabits per second, download speed, and an upload speed of 20 megabits per second. Latency is to be maintained at below 31 milliseconds. But these promised baseline performance will inevitably drop when the service goes to densely populated areas such as New York or California. Motley Fool estimates that when the subscribers number reached 3 million, Starlink would have reached its maximum capability based on its throughput of 20 gigabits per second. There is one great news. Since not all Starlink capacity will be used, Starlink may be able to oversubscribe to 8 million users and make $10 billion a year without compromising performance. Still short of $30 billion projection, but not bad at all. Elon Musk admitted to this challenge in a tweet as well. To be clear, these limitations may be solved with innovation over the long term, which explains Elon Musk's optimism. But okay, let's assume SpaceX figured out a way to acquire 25 million subscribers and solved its bandwidth problem. What's the outlook for Starlink's business then? Here's the good news. I think it'll be a great business because of one simple economic concept, the entry barrier. Put it in plain English, no one can build rockets like SpaceX, so no competition for Starlink. The entry barrier for this industry is so high you have to build a rocket for it. No one can cross it. Get it, entry barrier? On top of that, there are many more factors that favor SpaceX. Elon Musk is a good fundraising person, for example, which is important for building rockets. Starlink's production 
is vertically integrated is another good example. SpaceX has an unmatched record of achievement, and most importantly, there is Starship's X Factor, its potential to launch 400 Starlink satellites at one go. Put all of these together, SpaceX will have an unchallenged market for many years before Amazon's Project Kuiper or perhaps a Chinese reusable rocket comes into the market.